It's summer anime time. As usual, there's a ton of throwaway shows, but there's a surprising amount of watch it when you're bored and forget its existence as soon as the season ends shows, and an abnormal amount of isekais about parental relationships. This season there are at least three, plus Rising of the Shield Hero and a few other recent shows. It seems like this is going to be the new unoriginal subgenre. Lovely! The best of this season's shows are easily Fire Force and Dr. Stone. Fire Force had me enthralled in literally the first 15 seconds. In just the first episode, there's proper world building, character introduction, and development, and the threat is introduced. In 23 minutes, including, I'm saying it again, a great intro and outro, the signs of a great show. I swear, it's like the music department watches it and then approves their requisition for the good music. The show reminds me a little bit of My Hero Academia. It's set in a slightly parallel world with technology set back a little. Or maybe just different, I don't know, because society, architecture, and common phrases are different, but close enough to make sense. Spontaneous human combustion is a problem, and that's where Fire Force comes in. They have a priestess to sanctify the person's soul, and kill what is now a fire demon. What's especially interesting, in case that wasn't enough, is that some people have pyrokinetic powers, which vary by the person and for how many generations the power has been in the family. This is where it feels like My Hero Academia, with various fire quirks and everyone trying to outdo each other. There are hints of a conspiracy about the source of infernals and cover-ups between various factions, as well as the main character's background. Plus, there's a League of Villains-style group going around and causing mayhem and distrust. Definitely worth a watch. Dr. Stone is a weird show, which is the best kind. One day in high school Japan, out of nowhere there is a bright light that turns everyone into stone. Some characters with high willpower or some kind of focus keep their awareness, while others just play statues until they are brought back into the world. The first character to come out of stone form, as far as we know as of episode 3, is Senku, a bit of a mad scientist who never stopped counting the seconds as he was turned into stone, letting everyone else know that it's been 3700 or so years. His goal is to bring back civilization, which is gone, taken over by nature with nobody to maintain it for thousands of years, and advance science from the nowhere point that they're at now to the new modern era. The main character is Taiju, who was in the middle of telling the girl he liked his feelings, and he kept up his thoughts about that and protecting her for the 37 or however many years before he broke out of his stone, six months after Senku, who by that time had a wooden watchtower, spears and bows, along with much needed hide clothing. He worked fast at bringing back society. Taiju is the muscle, while Senku is the brains. These two have to decide who to bring back to life after Senku refines a chemical that will weaken the stone just enough for the person inside to break out, even if they aren't conscious. Unless they have a part broken off, which basically means death. And sometimes that means making hard decisions. Taiju, of course, wants to use their first batch on his potential girlfriend that yet literally hasn't stopped thinking about for thousands of years. But when they're attacked by lions, they have to revive the strongest person they know, Tsukasa even though he's a bit unstable. Tsukasa wants to recreate the world in his vision, with no corruption or evil, which he blames on adults, destroys their statues, and tries to stop Senku and company from creating weapons of science, which would overpower the guy who could beat lions in a fight. Dr. Stone is a show where you never know what's going to happen next, and while Tsukasa wants to remain in the Stone Age, he still can keep a mental chess game going with Senku about what their plans are, and he's knowledgeable enough to know what he might be up to based on what materials he's using or what direction they're headed. It's not exactly Death Note, but the mind games going on are great, as are the characters. Ari Fureta from Kamu Place to World's Strongest is an isekai that I've been calling Shield Hero Light. The anime barely counts as an isekai because there's about 30 seconds where they talk about how their whole class got transported over, and then suddenly they're all in armor acting like they've always lived there. I've read a bit of the manga out that's out there, and they spend about three chapters on confusion and training, so I don't know why they could have at least half an episode on that. Long story short, the main character gets in a pretty useless ability though it's a lot like the attacks in Full Metal Alchemist, basically moving parts of the ground and so on, so it comes down to a matter of imagination. 
After a betrayal by one of his classmates, he falls down a massive chasm from one of the earlier floors of the dungeon to further than anyone's ever been before, getting his arm bitten off by a monster, and finding a magic ore, something incredibly rare and life-saving for him, and he uses his transformation to make a spear. This proves very useful, and to avoid starving to death, he eats the monster meat, and surprisingly gains the abilities of the monster, and his RPG stats increase tenfold. Time for a feast! He eventually finds his way to transmute a gun and a stylish jacket, and becomes Nero from Devil May Cry. His goal is to make it to floor 100, the bottom, which hopefully there is a fast way to the top, or at least a way home for him. On the way he finds a vampire lowly locked in an unbreakable cage which he easily transmutes open, and she joins him on his journey. The manga goes places, so I can't wait for each new episode. To the Abandoned Sacred Beasts is a revenge story about people getting revenge on the people who got revenge on the Avengers, and there's just a whole lot of revenge going around, you're gonna have to trust me. The North Country and the South Country are at war, and the North is outnumbered, so they do the usual evil North Country thing and make a platoon of genetically modified soldiers who turn into various mythological creatures called incarnates and act as an army of one group. However, the more they transform, the more the creature's minds take over. The North Army decides that since a peace treaty is about to be reached, the world doesn't need them, so they're going to have someone try to take them out. Meanwhile, they all realize on their own that they're going to lose their minds, so they make a pact that only one of their own will stop them before they become a huge problem, figuratively and literally. One thing leads to another, and this story is about a twisted web of vengeance and whether or not the daughter of one of the incarnates can forgive another for killing her father. Capcraft is a buddy cop story with a twist. There was some kind of event that caused Earth to fuse with a fantasy world, so crime has changed. After the main character cop's partner is killed in a magic-related incident, his replacement is from the fantasy side's rural guard. It's a pretty dark show, with some comedic relief coming in the form of Culture Clash, but with the villains and their goals, it's plot heavy even with the two investigators having a hard time understanding each other in many ways. Vinland Saga is a Norse epic loosely historically based on Thorfinn, the son of a famous warrior known as Thors the Troll of Jam, as they leave Iceland to join their call to arms and fight along the Jarm's Vikings, a mercenary unit which he had abandoned to start his family. I want to compare it to Berserk because the feeling of actual combat is similar as well as a Cade forced to be in circumstances he shouldn't be in, though it's nowhere near as dark or gory or really a lot of things as Berserk. The release schedule has been kind of weird with three episodes coming out in one day and then a fourth releasing on July 29th. I'm assuming they released the first three early for some reason and then now it's on a regular schedule but it was kind of weird having nothing for three weeks. Meanwhile in space, Astra Lost in Space is a fun sci-fi adventure that's, so far, reminiscent of some of the filler episodes of Cowboy Bebop, but with less grit and more... high school? The cast was supposed to spend a couple days in space camp in orbit on a planet safely from Earth distance and practice landing it, until a mysterious sphere absorbs them one by one and they reappear, minus their teacher, on a ship thousands of light years away from Earth. It's basically the plot of Star Trek Voyager, except that they have to stop on planets for food and water, making for some interesting adventures. The twist? They were not randomly chosen or assigned. Everyone aboard was supposed to have disappeared or died in this accident for one reason or another, which leads to suspicion among themselves. The character development is strong here. I'd say it's one of the show's strongest suits. There are a few other shows worth watching, but they're time killers that don't really seem to be going anywhere plot-wise, even though they've been taken to another world. Besides, who has the time to watch everything? Comment on your favorite show or anything I've missed, I left out the sequel series and continuing shows like Accelerator or Blade of Demon Destruction. Uh, give this video a like if it was worth your time, share it to your lazy friends so you don't have to keep telling them what the show you like is called and to anyone who would just like it in general and enjoy finding more shows. Subscribe to see next season's breakdown, not to mention more anime-related videos in the future. And with that, I'll see you around.